Hey guys, welcome back to the Rocky and Derek Show. Today we are here with Trista Miller of the Hand to Hand Market. And she does events. What kind of events do you do? Well, I do events that are more focused with showcasing artists. So things like an indie craft fair or something where there are artists selling their own self-published zines or um, artists that are selling like comic books and their art and stuff like that. So I do a lot of art focused events. How long have you been doing this? Um, I've been doing events for about eight years. So I started the hand to hand market in 2011 and that came out of finishing up art school and not really sure what I was going to do. And so I was selling my art at local craft fairs and online and, and I was doing freelance illustration work and there wasn't a very uh, strong and well curated indie craft fair in Greensboro that was happening indoors. So I approached a friend and asked if he would help me start one because he had a lot of experience doing events. And so we started the hand to hand market on March 19th, 2011. And the spring market just happened on March 17th, 2019. So it has been a solid eight years of doing events. Does it cost to get into your events? It does not cost to get into the hand to hand market, but I have a new event coming up this Sunday on March 31st. It's called Comics Life, and it's a ticketed event where it's a one day event that hosts workshops, panel discussions, and presentations from comic artists all over the country who are sharing their knowledge and wisdom about how they started their career. And there's also vendors at that one as well, where you have creators such as comic artists, cartoonists, illustrators showcasing their work as well. So it's a networking event and something like a TEDx style event where it's all focused about the comic industry. Did you always want to be an inventor? An inventor? Well, I would say an, a, an artist is an inventor, right? So I always wanted to be an artist ever since I was five years old and it's what I've always done. So I do events, but events are an extension of my creative thinking as an artist, right? So artists have to be entrepreneurs today. And so you have to think innovative and you have to think how can you create something, not only expressing yourself, but maybe creating a flat platform for other people to express themselves as well. So it's about being inventive and entrepreneurial and leaning into possibility of how as an artist, can I create other experiences for other people? What is your favorite type of art to draw? Well, I would say painting um, is what has always come really natural to me. So my favorite kind of art to draw, I would say, is doing abstract painting. Um, but I also like to draw portraits, people pets, all kinds of things. Like I like to draw from life and I really believe that you, um, before you can start pulling things out and abstracting them, you have to know how to see the world. And I think drawing is about seeing. So I love to draw anything that I can see. And then I also like to pull from that and abstract and create my own abstract paintings. What is one of your favorite like drawings that you have done? Um, Man, you know, I, I was just cleaning out my studio yesterday and I was going through portfolios of all my work from college and I would say the, the work that I, my favorite drawing or painting or anything that I've made is a collection of drawings and paintings that I've made of over the years of self-portraits. So I have self-portraits that go all the way back to 15 years ago to portraits that I did almost every single day for one year. So I really kind of appreciate looking back at my work and seeing myself grow, you know? So I would say that that's my favorite work that I've made. Did you go to school to be an artist? I did actually. I have a Bachelor of Fine Arts uh, with a concentration in painting and drawing. I went to UNCG, uh, which has an excellent art department, and it's gotten even better since I graduated. So it's a phenomenal school to go to for art. Did you have any doubts along the way? Absolutely. 
I mean, you know, if, if your whole creative practice has to be motivated by yourself, right? Art is a very solitary practice. So you're going to have self-doubt, right? You're not sure. You're so in it, um, all, all in your own head. And so I've definitely have had doubts. But I think when I have those moments of doubts, I have to really dig deep into myself and push through it because I do believe that making art is more than about yourself. It's a bigger, it's a, something bigger than that, right? It's, and so I feel like I'm part of a bigger conversation that has been happening for hundreds and hundreds of years between myself and all the artists that came before me. And I mean, every artist has self-doubt. It's inevitable. Did any of the artists that went to your events become like well known or famous? Actually, there is um, an artist that I really admire who is a friend of mine who um, eight years ago had just started out doing freelance illustration and they did my events and over time their career has taken off because they were very smart about the way that they did their career, their style as an artist that they developed and they had huge opportunities in illustration work. And so that artist's name is Jordan Grace Owens and she's located in Durham, North Carolina. Is there anyone who inspired you or you look up to? Oh, absolutely. Um, I would say that the person, the person who has inspired me the most is actually someone who would be considered a musician, um, but they, to me, they're an artist in every sense of the word. And that artist is Bjork, the singer Bjork. Uh, Bjork has had a really big impact in popular music. She's a little, like, some people think she's a little weird, but really a lot of the things that she does in her music and the way that she thinks about each album that she creates is the same way that an artist thinks about their practice. There's no difference between the way a musician thinks about their practice and craft as just as a visual artist. But to me, she showcases visual art in the same way by collaborating with other musicians, artists on her videos, artists, fashion designers in her clothing, everything. She brings every facet, I think, of art that has always fascinated me into her own practice. And so I'm really excited because I'm going to New York City in May and I'm gonna see her for the first time ever. I've waited 18 years. So she's putting on her biggest production in New York in May and I'm gonna be flying there to go see it. So I'm really excited. Does a lot of work go into putting on an event? Oh, oh yeah. Um, event planning is a 24 seven kind of job if you don't plan well, right? So I think it's really important to, to work with a sense of urgency when you wanna create an event. And how you do that is you think backwards. You, you think future and you work backwards, right? So you set the date, you decide what kind of event you wanna do, you set the date, and then every day leading up to that, you have to pace yourself to make sure everything that needs to happen happens on time. And sometimes it doesn't, and so you end up having to do a lot of work right before the event to make sure everything goes off really well. But also there's elements to it that you can't control. If you do an outdoor event, you can't control the weather, right? So you gotta have strategy and backup plans. If you're doing an event, you can't control who's gonna be there or not if people show up. So you have to do as much marketing as possible. So it always is creating um, strategy and always thinking about what you can do, but you have to turn your brain off some days. You know, you have to kind of clock out because you could be thinking about it all the time. So it is a lot of work, but it's, it's very rewarding when you get to the day of and you just let it happen, right? What is the biggest uh, event that you've put on? Um, I, I mean, every hand to hand market that I put on one in the spring and one in the holiday are pretty big. So, um, I would say the most unique event, right. That's kind of big for me is, um, a new event that I'm doing this weekend on March 31st. Um, I mentioned it before, um, I may have not mentioned it yet, but the comics life. 
So I'm doing an event called Comics Life that is an unconventional experience for the comic industry, right? So comic cons happen all the time and they're wonderful events that get you really excited about comic artists that you wanna see, comic books that you've always loved, or maybe even like um, movies or something that you're really interested in or TV shows. So comic conventions have become really big on not only comics, but pop culture. And it's kind of taken over a little bit um, with the entertainment industry being involved in comic conventions and a little less about comics. So I have a lot of friends who are freelance illustrators, cartoonists, and comic book writers and comic artists. And over the years having these relationships I realized that there wasn't an event that created space for the general public to know more about how to get into that industry, right? And for comic artists to kind of come together and network and talk about their frustrations or things that they're excited about. And so I am really excited about this event on Sunday because it's going to be a a great collection and presentation of artists that I really admire that are illustrators and cartoonists and comic artists talking about the best or worst advice that they ever got as an artist in their career or how to do basics in inking or how do you develop your own comic story or even about an academic point of view of like how do you read comics how do you understand them and so I'm really excited about this event because not, you know, I'm not a comic artist, but I'm someone who's consumed a lot of graphic novels and comic books over the years. And I'm just as excited as somebody who uh, wants to know more about it too. I'm, I'm curious. So I think this is going to be a really big event and I want it to grow. I want it to be something that exists, not just in Greensboro, that it can happen all over the country. Right? So I'm hoping that that will become my biggest event. What did you have to do to get to where you are right now? Mm. I had to do the work, right? So I had to put in the time and clock in the mileage and drawing as much as I possibly could, right? So it started with drawing all the time as a kid. And then drawing all the time as a kid then turned into having conversations with my teachers when I was in high school about how can I become an artist, right? And then I went to school for, you know, to college for art, but then that required doing the work. And it's those who do all the work all the time are the ones that eventually catch on to things, right? And that's when things start to click and you start mastering your craft. And I think all those years of drawing, painting, showing up, doing the work created my creative thinking skills so that when I decided to take on something else like doing events, I had the discipline and the creative thinking and problem solving skills to be able to figure out how to do it, how to manifest my idea into something. So how I got to where I am was just doing the work and being consistent and disciplined. Have any of your artwork ever made to like a museum or something? Actually, yes. Um, about four years ago, I had um, three drawings and a show in a museum in Raleigh at the Contemporary Art Museum. So that was a really big um, achievement, you know? And my work has been collected by people over the past 12 years. So there's people who do consistently buy my paintings and drawings. Um, but I think also one of my biggest achievements as an artist was uh, being asked to do a magazine cover doing a full illustration for a magazine cover. That was really cool. That was a really fun project to do and it was very rewarding, you know? What do you think was the best thing that got you here? Like, the best thing going through the journey? Mm. Well, I'll, so I'll tell you something very, um, very real like very personal to my journey um, was actually walking away from what I thought was my biggest dream. So when I uh, was in art school, I actually, my dream 
from the time I was 17 until I was uh, 21 was to move to New York City. So my biggest dream was to move to New York City and be an artist there. And um, when I was there, I got there, I transferred schools from UNCG. I worked really, really hard and had straight A's and got into art school in New York. And I transferred and I lived in Manhattan. I worked in Manhattan. I had a job at a museum, at an art museum, and I worked really hard to get there. Um, but then life said, this is temporary and you need to come back home because my mom was diagnosed with terminal breast cancer. So my mom, who was the biggest supporter of my life and the most important relationship that I had and the one person who did everything to support me so I could be an artist, uh, she became really sick and I didn't have a choice. Uh, there was no choice, in my opinion, to stay in New York or to come back home to Greensboro. So I came back to Greensboro and my mother um, did eventually pass away and I was devastated. I was really sad and I didn't know what I was gonna do. And if it wasn't for that hardship, I don't think I would be the person that I am today because I made a choice to dwell in the land that I'm in. And so when I came back to Greensboro, I decided that I was gonna really dwell here. I was going to make something here. I was going to do something not only for myself, but do something for others, right? Because there are other artists here who have that dream and desire to be successful. But, you know, you really can only get there through relationships. And when you cultivate a good sense of community and a good sense of relationships with others, you can do anything. Anything's possible. Right? So I think that was one of the best things to ever happen to me. Even though it seems really hard and sad, it's the thing that redirected my path and it got me to where I am today. How can people get in contact with you? Oh boy. Um, well, I have multiple Facebook pages and Instagram accounts for my events, but um, if you'd like to see more of my work, the best place to see is on Instagram. You can look up Trista Miller, uh, T-R-I-S-T-I-N-M-I-L-L-E-R. -L -L -E and you can also find um, the Hand to Hand Market on Facebook, on Instagram. You can find Comics Life on that as well. And you can find links to other events that I put on through my event production company called Find and Trust Events. But the best place to find me is on Instagram and people can contact me directly that way. What is the dream you want for yourself and your art? That's a really good question. I... The vision that I have for myself right now, um, because I think it's really important that even when you're a kid or you're a student at any time, I think it's really important to cultivate a vision right? Dreams are in our heads, but visions are something that we can start working towards, right? It's where do we want to see our future self? And then you put goals into place and strategy to actually get that there, to get there, to manifest that. And so the vision I have for myself, my biggest desire is that everything that I make, whether it's an event or my visual art, is part of cultivating my legacy that when that it does that my work whether it's through events or whether it's through my art has created a positive experience for other people and has empowered other people to want to express themselves right to use their creative thinking their own hands to manifest the things that they want to do in their life to express their own hardships right like maybe by being inspired my by my sketchbook practice somebody else sees my sketchbook they get excited and inspired and they start using a sketchbook to help express themselves through visual journaling so i'm hoping that my biggest desire is that all my practices that I do, whether it's through events or through making work, inspire other people to be creative as well. So through time, I can see that and that has been happening, which is really means a lot to me, you know? What advice do you have for children or anyone who wants to be an artist? Mm. 
I would say that the biggest advice that I would give anybody is a truth that I discovered is that it's not about you. You are not the hero of the story. So whatever you do, whatever you choose to do, be very careful about how ego drives you. It's not about being famous. It's not about being the best and the biggest you know, name out there for art. Because life will happen and it will humble you. And you have to remember that being anything that you wanna be when you grow up and you dream about that, there are things that are gonna happen that are gonna derail you, right? Life does that. So how can you create strategy and ways of coping with that, right? How can you move through that? So I would encourage students and kids now to stay committed to what it is that you want to do, that it's possible to envision yourself doing something amazing, but remember that you are not the hero of the story, that it's about serving other people and being in service, right? By using your skill sets to serve others and to have relationship, because at the end of the day, it's about connection, right? So it's about honoring other people. So it's not about you. Well, thank you for this amazing interview. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks for having me. Thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe, like, and comment. Comment your favorite thing about Kennedy's outfit. Until next time.